The Legend of the Blue Bonnet, an old tale of Texas retold and illustrated by Tommy DePaula. Read aloud by Mr. David Mercaldo. Great spirits, the land is dying. Your people are dying too. The long line of dancers sang. Tell us what we have done to anger you. End this drought. Save your people. Tell us what we must do so you will send the rain that will bring back life. For three days the dancers danced to the sound of the drums. And for three days the people called Comanche watched and waited. And even though the hard winter was over, no healing rains came. Drought and famine are hardest on the very young and the very old. Among the few children left was a small girl named She Who Is Alone. She sat by herself watching the dancers. In her lap was a doll made from buckskin, a warrior doll. The eyes, nose, and mouth were painted on with the juice of berries. It wore beaded leggings and a belt of polished bone. On its head were brilliant blue feathers from the bird who cries, J, J, J. She loved her doll very much. Soon, she who was alone said to her doll, the shaman will go off alone to the top of the hill to listen for the words of the great spirits. Then we will know what to do so that once more the rains will come and the earth will be green and alive. The buffalo will be plentiful and the people will be rich again. As she talked, she thought of the mother who made the doll, of the father who brought the blue feathers. She thought of the grandfather and the grandmother she had never known. They were all like shadows. It seemed long ago that they had died from the famine. The people had named her and cared for her. The warrior doll was the only thing she had left from those distant days. The sun is setting, the runner called as he ran through the camp. The shaman is returning. The people gathered in a circle and the shaman spoke. I have heard the words of the great spirits, he said. The people have become selfish. For years they have taken from the earth without giving anything back. The great spirits say the people must sacrifice. We must make a burnt offering of the most valued possession among us. The ashes of this offering shall then be scattered to the four points of the earth, the home of the winds. When this sacrifice is made, drought and famine will cease. Life will be restored to the earth and to the people. The people sang a song of thanks to the great spirits for telling them what they must do. I'm sure it is not my new bow that the great spirits want, a warrior said. Or my special blanket, a woman added. As everyone went to their teepees to talk and think over what the great spirits had asked. Everyone, that is, except she who was alone. She held her doll tightly to her heart. You, she said, looking at the doll, you are my most valued possession. It is you the great spirits want. And she knew what she must do. As the council fires died out and the teepee flags began to close, the small girl returned to the teepee where she slept to wait. The night outside was still except for the distant sound of the night bird with the red wings. Soon everyone in the teepee was asleep except she who was alone. Under the ashes of the teepee fire one stick still glowed. She took it and quietly crept out into the night. She ran to the place on the hill where the great spirits had spoken to the shaman. Stars filled the sky, but there was no moon. Oh great spirits, she who was alone said, here is my warrior doll. It is the only thing I have for my family who died in this famine. It is my most valued possession. Please accept it. Then, gathering twigs, she started a fire with the glowing fire stick. 
The small girl watched as the twigs began to catch and burn. She thought of her grandmother and grandfather, her mother and father, and all the people, their suffering, their hunger. And before she could change her mind, she thrust the doll into the fire. She watched until the flames died down and the ashes had grown cold. Then, scooping up a handful, she who was alone scattered the ashes to the homes of the winds, the north and the east, the south and the west. And there she fell asleep until the first light of the morning sun woke her. She looked out over the hill and stretching out from all sides, where the ashes had fallen, the ground was covered with flowers, beautiful flowers, as blue as the feathers in the hair of the doll, as blue as the feathers of the bird who cries, J, J, J. When the people came out of their teepees, they could scarcely believe their eyes. They gathered on the hill with she who was alone, to look at the miraculous sight. There was no doubt about it. The flowers were a sign of forgiveness from the great spirits. And as the people sang and danced their thanks to the great spirits, a warm rain began to fall, and the land began to live again. From that day on, the little girl was known by another name, one who dearly loved her people. And every spring, the great spirits remember the sacrifice of a little girl and fill the hills and valleys of the land, now called Texas, with the beautiful blue flowers, even to this very day. The End Author's Note The blue bonnet is a form of wild lupine. It is known by other names too, such as lupine, buffalo clover, wolf flower, and el conejo, the rabbit. But its most familiar name, Blue Bonnet, probably began when the white settlers moved to Texas. The lovely blue flowers they saw growing wild were thought to resemble the bonnets worn by many of the women to shield them from the hot Texas sun. The suggestion to do a book for children on the origin of the Texas state flower came to me from Margaret Looper, a reading consultant in Huntsville, Texas. Gathering folktale material is always interesting, but more so when the suggestion to look at a tale comes from a friend. Margaret sent me a copy and I cannot thank her enough for I was immediately drawn to it. Then with tireless effort Margaret kept me supplied with as many versions as she could locate and during one long New Hampshire winter my mailbox was filled with information and pictures of that lovely spring wildflower. Margaret also helped me find out about the Comanche people, especially details about their early life in Texas before it became impossible for these brave people to share the land with the settlers and they were expelled or had to flee. When doing a book based on a legend involving real people, it becomes a drive to find out as much as possible about their customs and way of life in an effort to portray as accurate and full a picture as possible. In this search, one comes upon information that fascinates. One point especially interesting to me was that the Comanche people did not have a concept of one god or a great spirit. They worshipped many spirits equally, and each one represented a special skill or trait. They prayed to the deer spirit for agility, the wolf spirit for ferocity, the eagle spirit for strength, and to the important buffalo spirit to send them buffalo for the hunt. The crow spirit was evil, therefore in my retelling the people prayed to the great spirits collectively. Even though the legend of the blue bonnet is a tale about the origin of a flower, for me it is more of a tale of the courage and sacrifice of a young person. She who was alone's act of thrusting her beloved doll into the fire to save her people represents the decisive sort of action that many young people are capable of, the kind of selfless action that creates miracles by Tommy De Paula.